So now L2 regularization, which is the other kind of regularization. So what is L2 regularization? It's the exact same condition. You don't want your coefficients to go out of bounds. So earlier you were adding a modulus of the sum of coefficients. In this case, you add a uh, squared sum, right? So squared sum is basically the instead of adding modulus of parameters, you add the theta squares, right? And the, this is the, so the cost function now would become something like this. So this is just, this is this part is the old cost function, right? This you are familiar with which is the same thing which was there in L1 as well and now in L2 instead of having modulus of theta which you had in L1 you are adding theta square so that's a whole that's a whole concept behind L2 regression now one point to kind of understand this is why this names L1 and L2 so L1 is basically nothing but this sort of thing called L1 distance so L1 distance is nothing so just to kind of this is for your own knowledge L2 distance so L1 distance is basically nothing but if you are trying to measure two points between L1, two distances A1, B1 and A2, B2. So then L1 distance is calculated as mod of A1 minus A2 plus mod of B1 minus B2. So if you are calculating distances between two points in space, right? So L1 distance is calculated as this A1 minus A2 plus mod of B1 minus B2 which is basically this plus this right so this plus this is the l1 distance right and l2 distance is nothing but a1 square a1 minus a2 square plus b1 minus b2 square right so that is l2 distance so which is basically this distance right so obviously in this particular case you might tend to think that l2 distance is a better method but that's not necessarily the case always uh, we'll kind of come to that in a later case. So in this case, uh, why I introduce this concept is basically what you're doing here is cost function of L1 is nothing but old cost function. I'm not going to write that again. Old cost function. By old cost function, I mean the cost function that we had used for linear regression plus alpha, which is this alpha is nothing but the, uh, the cost of the penalty that we want to imply alpha into uh, summation of L1 distance of all the thetas, right? So L1 distance of thetas mean alpha into L1 distance of the parameters, right? So L1 distance of the parameters is nothing but summation of and L1 distance of theta from origin, right? So L1 distance of theta from origin is basically nothing but mod of theta 1 minus 0 plus mod of theta 2 minus 0 and so on and so forth so which comes out to be alpha into summation theta 1 mod of theta 1 plus sorry not summation it's basically theta 1 plus mod theta 2 no, summation. theta 2 plus mod of theta 3 so on and so forth right so that is basically alpha into summation of theta mod of theta and similarly if you do L2 distance of theta you would get alpha into summation of theta square. So that's the difference between this is CL2. CL2 is the same old cost function plus alpha into theta square and this is alpha into mod of theta. And that's the basic difference between L1 and L2 regularization and you kind of also get the point why they are called L1 and L2. L1 and L2 are basically nothing but they are, uh, you can also interpret this as sort of uh you know uh, this is one order difference so l1 is basically order one difference l2 is order two difference right so l1 and l2 and this kind of you can also measure l1 and l2 distances so that's just that's the whole concept that we use here uh, now l2 regularization is basically something what will happen in case of l2 regularization is l2 regularization will force our parameters to be small remember this in case of l1 regularization our model was basically forced your coefficients are forced to come to zero that is not the thing that will happen in l2 regularization i had mentioned that already in case of l2 regularization the coefficients would become small all of them would become tend to become small it's not anymore like uh, you know what you are the most important uh, you are the most uh, predictive coefficient and most predictive feature so your coefficient remains and the rest of the coefficients kind of go for it or that's not the, gonna be the case the coefficients in general are gonna be compressed 
obviously there would be coefficients which because of the compression would tend to go to zero but it's not like you know the most there's there's a selective bias that's not the case it's not like the most useless features go down to zero all of their features all of the weights kind of go down uh, comprehensively to our lower values right so that's what l2 regularization does so obviously in this limit alpha goes to if alpha is nearly equal to zero you would basically have the standard linear regression right which is the same because we know that if your alpha is tending towards zero there's no contribution in the cost function because of this particular factor right so obviously this is the old cost function and that's exactly what would happen in case of your alpha is very extremely high all your model responses will be suppressed which is basically if your alpha is high then probably this part of the function is almost zero right so then there's no all it would basically learn is just some random values of theta such that this particular thing is kind of minimized that's all it would learn it would not really learn to fit a curve to that entire thing so ridge regression can be computed in sklearn using the same concept as we did for S, uh, for lasso uh, and you can again see this is an awesome curve right because there's no as you remember for overfitting you can very clearly distinctly remember the pattern in overfitting right there would be points to which it would fit perfectly and then uh, it would and it would probably be an extremely extremely heavily fitted curve right which is not the case here it's looking like a smooth curve here which probably shows that we have kind of uh, avoided the problem of overfitting in case of rich now let's look at the coefficients now let's see how that varies now as i was saying in case of this you can clearly see that the coefficients are all all of them as you can clearly see are varying but obviously their values are reduced but it's not like they have gone down to zero till x to the power 8 definitely none of them have gone down to zero and even when it comes to x to the power 8 you can see that they are varying all the way till up to x to the power 14 right so coefficients up all the way up to the power x to the power 14 are still non-zero so that probably says that this is what i was trying to tell in the major difference between l1 and lasso and rich regression so lasso or l1 regression is basically the concept that your lasso is gonna basically completely reduce down the coefficients which are not useful down to zero l2 is going to compress all of them down to a lower value right and that's exactly what is happening here in this case so l2 has you can clearly see in case of l2 there are a lot of coefficients which are not reduced down to zero right uh, so l1 versus l2 regularization so obviously built-in feature selection right in case of l1 which is this is an advantage in case of l1 uh, uh, but you can see even at last even at smaller alphas are uh, coefficients are getting reduced down to zero so that's a pro as well as a con for lasso regression in lasso regression you can if, if you use a decently uh, high amount of alpha you can completely reduce down all your features right even which are important so that's the thing it's a built-in feature selection that is part of lasso regression so if you have extremely high values of alpha you can completely get your important features also reduced the coefficients of important features also get reduced down to zero but if you have a moderate alpha and you can kind of uh, you know you don't penalize it so strongly you can basically build a very good feature selection uh, so your you all your non-important features get reduced down to nothing right so therefore lasso regression technique selects some feature while it reduces the coefficients of others to zero this property is known as feature selection which is absent in case of ridge as a result we tend to get a lot of zeros coefficients right in coefficients we tend to get a lot of zeros with l1 regularization this doesn't happen with l2 right so that's the summary of l1 and l2 regularization computationally efficient due to having analytical so l1 is slightly more computationally efficient um, uh, l2 is more kind of computationally efficient because of the square thing uh, calculating the modulus is slightly more cost effective sorry cost computationally tougher so l1 is tougher uh, computationally apart from that it l1 produces sparse outputs which i have already explained to you sparse output means basically a lot of the zeros in coefficients uh, not l2 and because it does that it's basically has this inbuilt feature selection uh, technique right so basically all the important features are already selected the features that are not important are kind of reduced down to zero so that's about summary of l1 and l2 so now john wants to know which technique would perform well if you would have more features let's say 10,000. so let's we have a large feature which is 10,000 features and some of these are independent features are correlated with other independent features what would you recommend lasso or rich 
So Jay Sauri said if we apply rich regression to it, it would probably retain all of the features. But uh, if we apply uh, and it would probably shrink the coefficient. So still the problem is the model will remain as complex as there are 10,000 features. This may lead to poor model performance, right? So if we apply lasso regression, that is probably a better idea because 10,000 features, you probably know that there are a lot of correlated features and you want to get rid of that. So if you want to kind of get rid of features in your uh, from your from your data set, then probably lasso is a better way to kind of go ahead with the process. So uh, that's why the main problem with lasso regression is that when we have correlated variables, it returns only one variable and then sets the other correlated variables to zero. So that will possibly lead to some loss of information resulting in lower accuracy in our model. So then what's the solution, right? So because if we use L2, there's, a, the, there's the features, number of features kind of remain a lot. But if we use L1 only, then the problem with that is a uh, lot of important features might also get reduced down to zero. So what do we do? So that's the entire thing that what we do for those kind of cases is the combina is basically so the solution for that is what is called elastic net regression. So which is basically nothing but a hybrid of L1 and L2. So elastic net is nothing but L1 and L2 combined. So earlier, this is your cost function for L1 and L2 combined, right? So earlier we had cost function which was looking like this. So this is a cost function, which was old function, old cost function, right? So this was summation of y minus y pred square. So now CL1 is old cost function plus L1 plus sorry, alpha into summation of mod theta and C of L2 is equal to old cost function plus alpha into summation of theta square and then there is c elastic which is same plus alpha into summation of mod theta plus 1 minus alpha into summation of theta square right so this is nothing but basically kind of you know optimizing between both the so l1 has some advantages l2 has some advantages you want to combine them and build some models. So, uh, so how does elastic regression work, right? So elastic regression. So let's say we have a bunch of correlated independent variables in the data set. So the elastic net will simply form a group consisting of those correlated variables. Now, if any one of those variable in this group is a strong predictor, right? So then it will include, we will include the entire group in the model building because omitting other variables like what we did in lasso might result in losing some information in terms of interpretation ability leading to poor performance okay let's so however elastic net is obviously because the way we do it by adding two more cost function this is definitely more computationally expensive than lasso or ridge independently now let's understand what exactly does elastic net do so in case of lasso what it was doing was if there are coefficients which are correlated with each other it kind of removes them completely right and just gives uh, just gives the one which is uh, probably just keeps one of those correlated features right just keeps one of them and removes all the rest of them in case of that was in case of last in case of rich what it does is basically shrinks all of the coefficients by some margin so that all the values have a very all of the values are shrunk to a small size right in case of elastic net what it does is basically if there are variables which are correlated with each other it kind of forms a bundle of them and then if any one of the features in that bundle is somewhat important then it keeps the entire bundle right this is exactly this is slightly uh, opposite to what lasso does in case of lasso if there's a bundle if there's one feature which is kind of extremely predictive, it probably retains them and the rest of all of them go to zero. In case of elastic net, that's not the case. In case there's a predictive, in case there's a value which is, uh, in case there's a value which is extremely, in case there's a feature which is extremely uh, predictive, it probably retains that entire bundle and then just reduces down the contribution from each of them. So now we try and fit an elastic net model on top of it which is nothing but as I said, it is just combination of lasso and ridge and let's see what happens to the coefficients. So co coefficients as you can see I have, so in case of lasso you have seen that it was extreme, it had uh, shrunk every coefficient starting from x4 which is not the case anymore 
uh, and in case of ridge you can see the coefficients were non-zero all the way up till x8 in case of elastic net the, the thing has changed in case elastic net the coefficients are non-zero starting from x5 or x6 i guess log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates